Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate sales totals by day of the week. This will allow you to see your best and worst days of the week. Your best day for sales might be on a Monday, for example, and your worst day on a Wednesday, like you can see there. This way, maybe you might want to run some extra promotions for Wednesdays. This business obviously does. And uh, maybe bring on extra staff on Mondays because you're busy. Today's question comes from Lisa in Reno, Nevada, one of my gold members. Lisa says, I run a small restaurant and it would be handy to know which days of the week are my busiest in terms of sales. This way I can bring on more staff during those days. It would be nice to enter two dates and see all of the sales between those dates summed up by day of the week. This way I can punch in, say, a three-week period from last year and see all of the busy days. Lisa, you forgot the word period there or whatever you want. I, I'll, I'll edit for you. Hang on. There, there we go. Some, sometimes when I get your emails, I just copy and paste what you send me. And, and I, I didn't proofread that one good enough, so sorry about that. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we're going to need a few things under our belt first. First, go watch yesterday's video between dates. And by yesterday, I mean Fridays because this video is going to be playing on Monday. So, yes, I said tomorrow when I recorded yesterday's, but I forgot today was Friday. So Mondays. OK, so, yeah, go watch this one. This will show you how to take a bunch of orders and then show or show paid orders between two dates. OK. That's the first part of what you need, Lisa. Then go watch this video. This will teach you about the weekday function and the weekday name function, how to determine what day of the week a particular date falls on. And then finally, go watch this video on aggregate queries. In order to group something up based on some value, like day of the week, you need to create what's called an aggregate query or a totals query. An aggregate query says, OK, I want to take all of these many, many records and say, put all the Mondays together, put all the Tuesdays together and so on. And I'll show you how that works in just a few minutes. But go watch these three videos first. They're all free. They're all on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those. And then come on back. I'll wait for you. I'll wait. I'll hold up class for just just for you. Go. <laughs> all right. Here's a copy of the Between Dates database, which is the one I built in the last video. So gold members, if you want, you can go download this off the website. That's one of the benefits of being a gold member. All right, so I'm going to copy this guy. Create a copy, right? Copy there. And we'll call this one the sales by date. Sales by date. All right. Let's open you up. All right, got my start date, end date here. Let's widen out that margin a little bit. Let's give all the, let's say all the sales from March. All right, if I show sales, there's a bunch of them. There they all are. And now of these dates, I want to know which ones fall on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, and so on. So the first thing we're going to do is add day of week to this query. So we'll come over here. Here's that aberration again. If you if this bothers you, by the way, all you got to do is close the query. And instead of running the query and then going into design view, just go straight into design view and that aberration doesn't happen. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, the guys at Microsoft have fixed the problem. All right. So right here. We're going to zoom in, Shift F2. We're going to add the weekday. So it's going to be WD colon, that's an alias, weekday of order date. That'll give me a number from 1 to 7 showing the weekday. There we go. And we learned that in the weekday video, right? All right, but I don't necessarily want to see a number in my results. I want to see the, the weekday name, right? The name of the weekday. So let's go back to design view. There's an aberration again. All right, come over here. Shift F2, we're going to add another one in. The weekday name, WDN, or whatever you want to call it, colon, is going to be the weekday name of. Now, you could put weekday order date in here or just WD, because we already figured out what WD is, right? But yeah, you can, you can stack functions and make you know, nested functions, but I, I find this much easier to read and to work with later. So hit OK, run it. There's the full weekday name, right? And if you want to abbreviate that, just use the left function, right? Come in here. We'll do one more. Shift F2, zoom in. I'll call it WD3, the left three characters, right? The left of WDN comma three. So take that one I just figured out, WDN, right? This guy, and give me the left 
three characters. Hit OK. Run it, and there we go. If you want to learn more about all those cool string functions, left, right, mid, all these things, watch my string functions video. Okay, now this query is good, save it. One, one thing that I see a lot of beginner access students do is they try to do too much with one query, okay? You can't really apply an aggregate to this query as it exists because there's just there's too much information in it, okay? Too many fields to deal with. So what we want, all we really want is the order total and that day of the week. I don't care about the description. This query handles the date criteria, right? This query handles whether it's paid or not, but I don't need all that stuff in my final result. In fact, it's at this point impossible to just aggregate this stuff. So we're gonna now close this guy and we're gonna use that one to feed another query, all right? Sometimes it's easier and, and more beneficial to break your more complicated queries down into multiple steps. So we're gonna make another query, create query design. We're gonna bring in that other query, the order between date. Okay, now we're going to bring into this query just the fields we care about. In other words, the WD3, which is our three-day, day of the week name, and our order total. That's it. And when I run it, I get just that. Okay, now we're going to apply the aggregate. The aggregate's going to say group by this field here. Okay, we don't have the exact date. We don't care about the exact date. All we care about is the day of the week. So all of the Mondays will get grouped together, for example. All of the Saturdays will get grouped together. And then we're gonna sum up this guy. All right, so design view. Go to your totals, that turns on the aggregate. All right, we got group by for this one, that's fine. We're gonna change this one, drop it down to sum. Okay, run it, and there you go. It is now grouped by these, and all of these are summed up together. We only have one unique one here. We got seven records. That's exactly what we should expect. All right, let's save this guy. Save it. Order by week, day, Q. Remember, keep everything singular. Okay. And that was easy because the other query handles a lot of the other stuff, right? The, uh, the, the date criteria and making sure it's paid and all that stuff. And this guy just needs to know that. Let's apply a sort so we can see which the busy days are and which the dead days are. So let's come in here. And let's apply a sort right here. Sort descending maybe. All right, save it, control S, and then run it again. There we go. Now it's it's the field is sum of order total. Eh, let's change that. How do we change that? Using an alias. I'll come right in here on the field name and I'll shift up to zoom in. And we're gonna apply an alias. We'll call it sales total, like that, colon. And that will change sum of order total into just sales total. It's a lot easier to read, I think. Run that. That's called an alias. You still want to make sure this applies or uh, um, abides by my rules. No spaces, no weird characters, All right? Just sales total. If you got spaces in your field names, no, 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 bad, bad, bad. You haven't watched my access beginner one class. Lots of fundamentals in there. Even for people who have been using access for years, they got to, you got to watch it. You got to just, you got to, you got to watch it. <laughs> want to learn more about aliasing fields? There's a video for you. All right, maybe you actually want this sorted by the day of the week. Okay, now if you come in here and, and sort this by day of the week as it is, let's sort that ascending by day of the week. You're gonna get them sorted alphabetically by day of the week, which probably isn't what you want. So what we're gonna do in that case is we're gonna add that WD, that weekday, back into the query. It shouldn't affect the aggregate because these two are the same thing. This, this one here is just based on that. So we'll make this guy ascending. Turn that sort off, run it now, and there you go. There's your one, two, three, four, see, and now you've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in that order. And if you don't want to see that guy, you can just hide it. You still need it in there for the sort, but you don't want to see it in the final result. Isn't that, isn't that pretty cool? Although personally, I wouldn't care if it was in there or not because I never let my end users see queries directly. I would take this and make either a form or a report out of it and show the user that. I don't let users poke around in queries or tables. That's the topic of a whole different video, but that's just me, that's my preference. If you wanna learn more about this cool aggregate stuff, I recommend my Access Expert 11 and 29 classes. Expert 11 talks about aggregate queries. We do lots more with aggregate queries. 
And in 29, I talk a lot more about the aggregate functions. There's lots of cool stuff you can do with this stuff. And I've only scratched the surface. That's what my fast tip videos are for. My full courses are to teach you this stuff in depth. My fast tips and my tech help videos are usually to, you know, answer a specific question. How do I do something? But I, I don't go into, you know, all the depth that I do in my full classes. I just, I'm showing Lisa how to tackle a specific problem using a couple of different techniques. And the two kind of complement each other because in my full courses, I teach you everything there is to know about what you're doing. Like we'll cover pretty much everything there is to know about aggregate queries, which I don't do in this video because I'm just showing you how to do this specific thing. So if you really want to learn access, that's what the courses are for, right? The fast tips are just a little help, a little, little, little nudge. All right, so there you go. That's how to do sales by weekday. Lisa, I hope that answered your question. I hope everyone else learned something. That's your fast tip for today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.